Good evening to all of our family, friends, students. We welcome you to our 2020 graduation. And as many of you know, this graduation is a lot different than any other graduation that we've ever had. But we're so glad that you joined us and we welcome you uh, here this evening for Champion Baptist Academy and all the wonderful families and the great students. We're so thankful for each and every one of you, and we welcome you here tonight, and we pray that this graduation will be a, a joy for you to be able to be a part of, and uh, you'll enjoy uh, uh, joining in with us here tonight. One scripture that I just want to challenge us all with before we pray uh, here this evening is our theme scripture for this past school year, 2019 and 2020, and it's based out of 1 Timothy 4 and verse number 12, I want to read that to you here tonight. It says this, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And what a great theme for this year, and we pray that all of you have been continuing to hold on to that, all of you students and parents and teachers as well, and really that thought of this year, the theme of being, be an example, be an example. I'm so thankful for our school, I'm thankful for our teachers and our staff who have been diligent and continuing to be faithful. The leadership of uh, Mr. Breedlove and all the teachers, we're so grateful and so thankful for all of you, and I uh, just just, just can't thank you enough uh, for your commitment and your love uh, for your students. And as we think tonight, we first and foremost want to say thank you teachers and staff for being that great example. And then parents, thank you for being that example. And students, we want to continue to encourage you to be that example that God would have you to be. Now, I know that probably many of you uh, parents did not think that you were going to be uh, turned into an instant teacher. And I read something here, and I just want to share this with you before we pray. And it said this. I love all these funny little memes and things that are going around. But this one I really liked. It said, if you see my kids crying outside, picking weeds, just keep on driving because they're on a field trip. And I know that one represents so many uh, of you parents and moms and dads, and you can relate. And I am with you. I can relate as well. And it sure has been a challenge. But we thank you all for just continuing to be consistent. And, and we pray that God is continuing to use us. We can't wait till next year to be able to be back together. But until then, we are so grateful and so thankful for all of you. You know, at Champion Baptist Academy, it is our desire to see champions that are raised. And not just champions, but champions for the Lord. That will continue to have character and will continue to exemplify uh, traits of what Christ uh, uh, had and what uh, certainly we see throughout the Bible. Uh, so it is our desire and our goal that we continue to see your, uh, your children continue to be raised up and that God would use them in a great way wherever he would have them to be. I'm thankful we don't just have a high education, but we have the highest education because we use God's word. And I want to just continue to encourage all of you. It's been a joy this year to be able to see your students grow educationally. It's been a joy to see your students to be able to grow spiritually. It's been a joy to be able to see your students grow mentally. And it's been a joy to be able to see your students also grow physically. And we pray that together we can continue to partner together and raise these champions for the Lord. So we welcome you tonight. Enjoy this graduation. Let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your protection. We thank you for all of the families represented through Champion Baptist Academy. What a joy it is, God, to see, uh, Lord, just wonderful, wonderful synergy between parents and homes and the school and the church. And we just thank you, God, uh, for this wonderful joy that we have. We pray that you will bless tonight in a special way as we honor these families and these students and all their hard work that they have put forth. I pray tonight will be a blessing and an encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good evening, everyone. Today, we celebrate the accomplishments of our pre-K, kindergarten, and sixth grade graduates. With each year, there is a lot of hard work, commitment, and challenges to overcome. And this year has certainly proved to be no different. Tonight, we acknowledge our parents and our grandparents. You're there, committed to supporting your child with the highest education through your prayers and through your finances. Each year, you ensure your child is well prepared for the school year with supplies that will ensure their future success. And this year, you have had to work extra hard while teaming up with our teachers to make sure the schoolwork is being done through the COVID-19 crisis and the rollout of online learning. And we also acknowledge our teachers and our staff. This year, teachers, you have worked tirelessly throughout the year with your love, lesson planning, decorating, and much more. This year, on a moment's notice, you flipped the traditional educational process from a traditional classroom setting to a virtual classroom setting. We thank you for your unfailing commitment throughout the year. And finally, we acknowledge our Creator. Psalm 106 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. We know that it is our God that sets us apart here at Champion Baptist Academy. For He showers us in His blessings. He gives strength and mercy when, is, when we're in need. He has answered many prayers throughout the year. And He has certainly given us grace to proceed. We are grateful for His many blessings. Now, at this time, our students have worked throughout the year working very diligently on their academics. Tonight, we have a brief presentation of some of the things that they've learned throughout the year. We hope that you enjoy their presentation. During the presentation, you will notice first our pre-K kindergarten class as they recite Psalm 100 and the ABC Psalm. Then, followed will be our 6th grade graduates as they recite the historical documents of the American's Creed, the Preamble to the Constitution, and the First Amendment to the Constitution. Psalm 100 Make a choice of nine unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Knowing that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, not yourself. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. They turn into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with Christ. We are thankful unto him and bless his name. And the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth under for all generations. Psalm 100. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H I J K L M N. Jesus died for sinful men. <coughs> oh, P Q R S T U. I speak with the work is to B N W. God has promised you X Y Z. A home return on me. Americans Creed. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people by 
the people for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the government, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to accept its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. William Tyler Page. Preamble to the Constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Preamble to the Constitution. The First Amendment to the Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. First Amendment to the Constitution. Every year, our students look forward to receiving a copy of the yearbook uh, that is put together with different memories of the year. This is the yearbook um, that we have for this year. We're excited to be able um, to have our students have a copy of this. And every year, our yearbook is dedicated to one of our faculty members um, that have, you know, has a special place in our hearts. And this year, uh, the yearbook is dedicated to Mr. Daniel Kamara. And I'll just read to you what um, it says in the yearbook. This year's yearbook is dedicated to our CBA alumni and now teacher, Mr. Daniel Kamara. Mr. Kamara has taught our upper grade students for three years, and this year he has also become a CBA bus driver. Mr. Kamara's next and exciting new role is now a husband. We wish him and his new wife, Elisabetta, much happiness in their marriage. We want to take a moment to thank you, Mr. Kamara, for your dedication and faithfulness to our school. Uh, with our students and also with the big task that you had of becoming a bus driver for our school. It means a lot. Thank you very much. Now this time, please enjoy different memories from this year. He moves among us, all that he does. All of his mercy, all of his love. If the pen of a writer would write every day, even this world could never contain how I've been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, laughter of summer, the changing of leaves, food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God's so good to me, precious are His thoughts of you and me. I could count them, there's not enough time, so I'll just thank Him for being so kind, God has been good, so good, I have been blessed. Arms that will raise, a voice that can talk, hands that can touch, Legs that can walk, ears that can listen, eyes that can see. I've got to praise Him as long as I breathe. I have been blessed. A father and mother who nurtured and raised, sisters and brothers, memories made. Our 
pastor to lead us, the psalter to pray, the stripes that can heal, the blood that still saves. I have been blessed. Throughout the year, we give out various awards for academic success, sports, and fine arts competitions. At this time, I would like to acknowledge some of these well-earned achievements. For our Academic Success Awards, we have certain individuals who stand out as hard workers. They pour out into their schoolwork and they work diligently to achieve a 4.0 grade point average on three out of four of their report cards throughout the year. I would like to acknowledge these students at this time. For our Academic Success Awards, we have Chino Cruz, Kaya Leeds, Leah Osborne, Eric Bernardo, and Yanalise Anderson. Congratulations, students, on your hard-earned success. Also, for our volleyball team, we have certain individuals who have earned certain awards throughout the year. And while all of our volleyball players are hard workers and they really battled it out on the court this year, we have certain individuals who really stood out amongst their peers through Christian character, their conduct, and their sportsmanship. And we have various awards to hand out for our volleyball team. First, for our most improved volleyball player award. This goes out to Leah Osborne. For our team spirit award, this award goes out for individuals who have the ability to be an encourager and to lift up the spirits of her teammates throughout the year. This award goes out to Jade Mendoza. And for our Sportsmanship and Christian Character Award, this award goes out to an individual who really exemplifies Christian character through their conduct and their sportsmanship on and off the court. And this award goes out to Alyssa Phillips. And for our Most Valuable Player, this award really goes out to the point maker, to an individual who labors and practices and through various competitions to make sure the points get put on the board. And this award goes out to Magdalena Breedlove. Also for our fine arts competition, we are very thankful for the American Association of Christian Schools and for the Garden State Association of Christian Schools, of whom we are accredited. And throughout the year, these organizations allow us to compete in various fine arts competitions, such as our state spelling bee and our state creative writing com competition. And this year, we have certain individuals who have earned awards in both of these categories. First, for our spelling bee, our state spelling bee, we have certain individuals who really poured out and worked hard to learn and to study various spelling words throughout the year. And they have uh, been awarded certain places in this year's competition. For third place in this year's spelling bee, we have Christina Agadello. For fourth place, we have a tie between Eric Bernardo and Alicia Sanford. And fifth place, this award goes out to Christian Breedlove. And for our creative writing competition, we are very proud of one of our students this year who wrote a piece in poetry and they won first place overall throughout the whole state of New Jersey. And for this high achievement, this year's award, first place in the creative writing contest, goes out to none other than Leah Osborne. Congratulations, students, 
all of you, on your hard work and for your achievements this year. Now, this year we have certain staff members that really have set certain benchmarks that need to be recognized this year. And first, I would like to acknowledge our third and fourth grade teacher, Mr. Mike Leeds. Mr. Mike Leeds has been at Champion Baptist Academy and serving in our school now for 10 years. His commitment, his love, and his creativity in the classroom is an example for many, including myself, for us to follow. And so, in appreciation for 10 years of dedicated service, we want to thank you, Mike, for your love and for your example. And this year, we award this plaque to you for your testimony. You are an example. Also, while we appreciate all of our volunteers here at Champion Baptist Academy, and we have many, through our lunch ladies who come in and they serve in the lunchroom preparing various meals for our students and hot lunches, to our bus drivers who come out early in the morning to warm up the buses and to transport our students to and from the schoolhouse, to substitutes who sacrifice their time to come in to use their gifts and their talents for both our students, our school, and for the Lord. But this year we have one volunteer who really stands out, who has dedicated their time and their commitment this year for the love of education, for the love of our school, and for the love of our students. And this year, in appreciation for their commitment and for their volunteerism, we would like to dedicate this plaque, Volunteer of the Year Award, to Mr. Augie Renna. Augie, thank you for all that you've done this year and for your love for Christian education and for our students. Now at this time, I would like to hand things over to our pastor, Pastor Bolt. Good evening, parents, teachers, students, graduates, loved ones. What an unusual year this has been. And uh, to your credit, we have all pulled together. And here we are to celebrate the advancement and the continuing on of Christian education. I want to thank all of you for your part and for Mr. Breedlove and all of our staff and our teachers for the wonderful job that uh, we have adopted to and adjusted to and for your prayers for each one of the students. We trust you're going to have a wonderful summer and that things will be turned back to normal. But we have just a few words to challenge you uh, from the book of Luke, we read in chapter 2, we read this message beginning with verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. <clears throat> and then we read in verse 46, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. We didn't know where Jesus was. Verse number 49 says, And he said unto them, How is it that he sought me? Was she not that I must be about my father's business? So as we come to the conclusion of the school year, what greater model would, should we have than when Jesus was 12 years of age and what the Bible said about him? And these scriptures tell us that he grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. For all the sacrifices you parents and guardians have made this year 
and having your children in a Christian school, do you realize that you can get educated, but education without God is empty and it's not balanced and it's not full. So what a privilege it is for our church and for all of our church family of are supporting us to be able to have these young people in our school. They deserve our continued prayers and encouragement. We aren't just bringing them here because we want a school. We're bringing them here so that they can be challenged to want to live to please God. And that is the only real joyful way of life and knowing His perfect will in their life. So then what greater example do we have than the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus was not reared in a perfect environment. He didn't have perfect parents. He did have parents who loved him and helped him develop his character. And so we see six things here in the scriptures of attributes of Jesus at 12 is one of the reasons why we have a Christian school, why you're sending your children to Christian school. Now this is very important as we come to the off time that you do not just let lax you have, we have a higher purpose, and that purpose is that our young people will grow with the attributes that Christ had that you won't find in public education or education absence from God or home absence from God. And I just want to bring these out here. The first thing is, is that we see the Lord had strength of spirit. And how important it is in a day and age when there's so much discouragement that people do not have spirit. They are uh, just trying to find one cheap thrill for the next thrill and wonder what life is all about. But if you have spirit, you have your purpose from God, you have a reason to be what you ought to be and a satisfaction out of that life. The second thing we saw in this scripture is that Jesus had the attribute of wisdom, godly wisdom. His home, while it was not perfect, produced an atmosphere that we're producing in our church and we want you to produce in the homes and in your young people that you can't buy with money. And that's not just the world's wisdom, but it's the wisdom of the creator of the universe. So your children are getting wisdom from God as well as have a strong spirit. And then we see that Jesus had divine graciousness in these verses and how important it is to go through life without a chip on our shoulder, without uh, being dominated by uh, defeatism and just me, 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 but to be gracious and to be the right kind of a person and enjoy being productive and not looking to sin for some cheap uh, expense or, or, or cheap thrill. Then we see that Jesus also grew in knowledge. It's wonderful to know about the world that our Father has created, but realize his perspective on it, which is found in the Holy Bible. And then we see that Jesus had depth of understanding. A lot of people have no understanding. They only live for their feelings. They don't understand that maybe what's happening now will turn out for the better if you keep your chin up and keep looking. And then we see the Lord had clarity of purpose. He knew why he was here on this earth. And as a young person, his parents couldn't find him. So they went and looked, and he was asking questions, and he wanted to learn from these rulers and the people, and he, they were astounded at how much he knew his purpose. And his parents came to him and said, uh, what were you doing, Lord? He said, I must be about my father's business. Each one of us have business, father's business, purpose in our life. So let's not let our families, let's not let the kids between now and when they come back in the fall or wherever they go, let's not let this time be wasted. Uh, the church here has wonderful books and uh, videos and things you can come and sign out. Keep them reading, keep them busy, spend time with them. And as you know, this cooperation that we have had to have since we had to shut down school was, has been a united front. You, the parents, we, the teachers, we, the church, and the students all had to put on a united front and there's three things important in education, and that is trust. And you have to have trust in your school. And the factors of our administration here, and the four uh, site, and, and how they have handled it, and have challenged you parents, and then challenged the 
responsibility you had to take the children at home and to see if they get their work done and, be, and produce great ethics. It's a great bonding situation. So I'm very, very pleased at the school year, the accomplishments, as you have seen in this graduation, and the general attitude of, of the children. And I think the Lord was blessed, and I think that they want to go on for it. So encourage them. Make sure they get to church when church is open. Make sure they keep busy doing good things. Make sure they uh, keep learning through the summer. And give them a positive attitude about all that we have. And uh, keep going, because God has a special purpose for these young people. And I'm amazed at some of the ability of some of these kids and what we're seeing at their age. And uh, just encourage them very much. And so trust is very important in our united effort in the school. But trust is also important. We have a tremendous curriculum here in the teacher. Excellent teachers are without a doubt uh, very important to helping to build the relationship. And, uh, and we have tremendous textbooks, but trust. And so when this breakdown takes place, all of a sudden, your children are home, they're not with the teachers, the teachers have to communicate with them, and it's a whole new ball game to pass that on. But now you, as a parent, which is God's basic instruction, have the ability to bond, make sure that they did their work, try to have a good atmosphere, and, and perhaps you have learned a lot while you've had to help them or see if they got their work done. So overall, I believe this has been a healthy situation, and you responded great, and hopefully the children have a whole attitude about wanting to come back, wanting to learn, and uh, we thank the Lord for that. And then, of course, trust also has to come to the parents or the guardians or whoever in that home. So I trust you've done your best. You've been forced to have to uh, cooperate with each other and, and they don't go off to school or whatever. But trust is a mutual relationship and you parents are working with our teachers Teachers may be experts on subjects, but you parents and guardians are the experts when it comes to your children. They all, we all need to welcome the input. It's a collective work being in a Christian school. And so I'd like to say that uh, congratulations and hopefully we'll soon be able to be seen face to face again and the kids will move on God's will for their life will be formed, and even through all of this experience, that they would realize where many people have to realize that uh, life is full of trials and tribulations and even the threat of death all around us. But the most important thing is that we have the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord. And so it is your parents that it is your God-given responsibility to train up your children. Those of you that aren't attending church and aren't uh, learning the joy of being part of a great church and uh, helping to use your abilities with your children. I hope during this time, maybe the Lord lets you know that Sunday is the Lord's Day and you can come out and uh, you can know Christ too and, and, and you can have great joy in your life if you honor him and, and the family can have great bonding together against the wiles of the devil uh, during these times. So it's not the responsibility of Christian schools to raise your kids. We're helping each other. It's a unified front and prayer, and God has brought us through. And I want to remind you that in Psalms chapter 1 and verse number 6, it teaches that the way the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If you are not walking with the Lord, praying with the kids, uh, enjoying them, teaching them, and having some fun with them, it's too much life. This is your great opportunity, and we thank you for investing in Christian education, but more than anything, let's help the kids to become like model Jesus was when he was their age, that wants to fulfill their purpose and have a zeal for life and do good to other people, and the great message that he died for our sins and rose from the grave. If you're not saved, please call the church. If you're not on your, for sure you're on your way to heaven, this virus got a hold of you and you were very sick, what would you be doing? You need to be walking with the Lord now and you need to be ready. So have a great summer. We we'll look forward to seeing you again. Be praying for our school. Uh, if there's other people that need a good school that you come across, your children and uh, people that you know, 
refer them to Mr. Breedlove and uh, be praying and uh, Lord willing we'll be uh, continuing on in the fall where we're leaving off. And congratulations to these graduates, the kindergartners and the sixth graders. May they go on and do great things for the Lord. Shall we pray? Dear Father, we thank you for your blessing, your help, your encouragement, and for the faithfulness of good people. Help us in the work here today. We have something that you cannot get in the world, and uh, what we have here, and the love that's in our midst, because you're in our midst. Bless each one of the teachers, each one of the students, each one of their families, and uh, keep them from sin. And as someone as wise he said, this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Help us to prefer you, Lord, and the freedom you give us in Jesus Christ. Bless us now. Amen. And now, for the moment you've been waiting for. To our graduates, you have successfully completed the kindergarten and sixth grade curriculum here at Champion Baptist Academy. And now, I hereby pronounce you kindergarten and sixth grade graduates of 2020. You may now move your tassels. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to challenge from our preacher for all of us to hold on to tonight and for all the students and for not just the students for, but for everybody watching this challenge tonight based out of Luke chapter 2 and these six attributes of Christ at age 12 and uh, something for all of us to continue to hold on to not just for raising children or grandchildren but also for me and also for us as adults let me just recap this this again these attributes of Christ at age 12 number one strength in spirit number two a godly wisdom and I pray that God continues to give all of us wisdom uh, graciousness but not just graciousness but a divine graciousness that Jesus had and, and what a desire it should be for all of us and, and not just students but all of us as Christians a hunger for knowledge do we all continue to have a hunger for knowledge and a depth of understanding there's nothing like having somebody who has an understanding uh, and, and really seeing Christ and at such a young age I pray that it again is a desire for all of us to raise children and raise grandchildren and for all of us to continue to have a depth of understanding, God's understanding. And then lastly, a purpose, a clarity of purpose. And aren't you thankful as Christians? It is our, uh, should be our purpose to continue to please God. And uh, certainly that was Christ's example as well. So what a great night. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And just a quick recap. I'm so thankful to see so many students earn awards. Uh, we congratulate all of our graduates, our kindergarten graduates, and, and the sixth grade graduates, and earning your diplomas. What a joy that it is. Good work. Way to go, students. Not just graduates, but all the students of Champion Baptist Academy. And then reflecting back, what a great year that it was, thinking of, of our Christmas program, and many of you enjoying many of the songs uh, and music class, and, and the spelling bee. Congratulations to you. Many of you who partook in the writing contest test as well. Uh, our volleyball team, uh, just so many great and wonderful memories this year and certainly God has been good to us all. And I want to just encourage you and close with this tonight. Uh, it's 1 Timothy 4.12. Hold on to that theme this year. Own it. Uh, students, uh, teachers, uh, parents, all of us, let's continue to be an example that God would have for each and every one of us. We cannot wait to see each and every one of, uh, of you again uh, next year for our school year. We are excited about it. Until then, continue. Let's continue to be that champion that God desires for each and every one of us to be. And let's continue to be an example that God would have for each and every one of us. We pray and hope that all of you have a wonderful night. Congratulations again to all of our graduates. Have a great night.
is a face that I see in the mirror The one I want others to see Do I show in the way that I walk in my life The love that you've given to me My heart desires to be like you Jesus